Excuse me. Mm, pardon. Did you miss me? <laughs> I just said, yes, So, you may be wondering, why would you build a still that small? Well, you know, during this hobby, you're gonna come up with a million ideas. And not all of them are good. Some of them are downright stupid. <laughs> and are just gonna be a waste of money and a waste of time. So, when you have ideas that you're like, I don't know if that's gonna work. Or, I, I can't imagine how much of a difference there would be between these two items. Well, make a gallon of both of them and then run them through your mini and find out if there is a difference, if it's worth exploring further. If you watch Jesse's videos, he's done gin, he's done all kinds of, you know, weird concoctions that he's tested out in his air still. And that's kind of what this is. It's a, it's a tiny testing still that I don't have to invest a whole lot of time and money in to get an answer to something that might just be purely for fun like putting candy in vodka and seeing if it tastes good link right up here <laughs> so yeah let's move on to the build when i started this project in my head a while ago i i thought to myself i'll just use one of these mini beer kegs as a boiler the problem is they're coated with a polymer so that they don't foam up when they fill them with beer at the brewery now that's a problem for us because this is going to get hot, not just from making it, but from, you know, hypothetically distilling with it. That was eye opening. So I had to rack my brain and uh, deal with some just internal emotional disappointment. And I decided to go with one of these. This is a mini keg. It's not one of the double lined mini kegs. It is for home brewing, but it's single lined. There's no uh, vacuum liner in it on the inside. I got this on Amazon for 37 bucks. It's a four liter keg and it's got a cool little top that screws down and has a little pressure release on it and all that kind of stuff. The good thing is the process that we're going to go through today to turn this into a hypothetical still is not going to destroy this so you can still use it for transporting your brew if you want to. Hey, my eyes are up here. I noticed you noticing my shirt. That's because this is from today's sponsor, Into The AM. I'm really glad to have Into The AM as a continued sponsor of the channel because they make awesome products. I am incredibly happy with them. I have all these cool shirts. The graphics are dope. They're ridiculously soft. And my wife can attest to that fact because as I've mentioned before, she steals them on a regular basis to wear them as comfy night shirts. And uh, you know, that's kind of sexy. It's a little irritating when she takes my favorite one, but you know, <laughs> the sacrifices we make. As I mentioned, the graphics are super cool. They've got a whole bunch more that they just put up on the website. I've got my eye on this one right up here. It's a personal favorite of mine. The other cool thing is that no matter how many times I end up wearing these and washing them, the, the designs have not come off in the wash. I don't know what they do to these, but they're kind of magical. So if you want to look at their new graphic tees, check out the link in the video description down below and also in the top comment. If you use that link, you're going to get a discount on everything that you purchase on the site. So check them out. All right, so this still is really just uh, three parts. You got your boiler, that's already done. Link for this one down in the video description. And the column is kind of up to you. It's whatever you want to do. I did a one foot long column with one inch pipe and a one inch coupler and then a one inch male adapter and if you want you can skip the column and just go straight into your one inch to half inch reducer elbow half inch pipe another elbow and then down okay so this is about a four inch piece of half inch diameter copper pipe going down into this copper union that uses a little brass fitting and that screws on to the male end of the the other side of the union and that's just soldered onto a three inch piece of pipe and the receiver i couldn't find a half inch to quarter inch diameter uh, reducer in the hardware store and I didn't have time to sit around and wait for one to show up. This is just a half inch copper pipe cap. 
and I just drilled a little quarter inch hole out of it and stuck my uh, quarter inch copper tubing up in there just right at the edge. Basically the, uh, the way I set it in there was so that the end of the copper tubing is level with the bottom of this copper cap so that there's no lip to uh, catch distillate so that it's not going to pool around that lip before it falls down in. It's just going to all go straight down in. And that leads down into about three and a half feet or four feet. I can't remember exactly what I got in here, but basically your mileage may vary depending on your column height. Um, so your, your downspout may end up being shorter than mine. Basically you want to end up getting three to four coils in your worm if this is the type of condenser that you're gonna do. Now you can also do a Liebig condenser or a shotgun condenser. It doesn't matter that this still is so much smaller. You can do anything that you want. Theoretically, if I can figure it out, I could put a sight glass on this thing, I could put bubble plates, whatever I wanna do, column packing, because this is an inch thick column. My, my goal is for this to kind of operate like a larger size still that the liquor fairy has so that we can infer that what happens in this small mini still is going to be pretty close to what's going to happen in a larger still of a similar or the same configuration see what i mean so here's a quick little montage of me soldering shit together but i highly recommend that you watch some videos from actual plumbers who know how to do this correctly and can give you a real lesson in soldering because if you've never done soldering before I'm like one step ahead of you that's all so do your research So the cool thing about this keg is it's threaded and it fits this male union. Not perfectly. The, the threads are not an exact match. So it's not a perfect fit. Now, is there a better solution? Yes, I'm sure there is. Do I have it in my garage? No, I do not. So this is what I went with. Crap tons of thread tape and then a little bit of flour and water paste around the top. It barely leaked and then I put the flour and water paste on it and it stopped it just like that. So what you need to do is once you get your parts together and do a dry fit, you need to figure out what burner you're gonna sit this on. So for me, I just sat it on my burner, which raised it up, and then you need to use those measurements to figure out how far down you need to come to whatever you're gonna use for your condenser. And don't worry, I'm gonna have a complete list uh, with links to all the parts that I use down in the video description down below. All right, so on to this monstrosity. If you're gonna use one of these for anything other than storing beer in, you got a couple things you gotta do. And the next thing is the spigot, and that's what used to be in this hole. The spigot is a huge pain in the ass and it is not designed to come out and be replaced. So all you gotta do for that is cut it off and then rip it out. The only way I was able to do that was to take a hacksaw blade, stick it down inside of the cut off spigot and then saw the edges of that plastic spigot casing until I could shove the whole thing down inside and just cut the top off. I just used my Dremel and a little cutting disc and cut all the way around this thing. I did leave a little metal tab in here that I cut a little notch into so I could stick my pipe in there. Now you've got to deal with the fact that you have some hole, you have a hole in here that you don't want and um, you need to close it up. So what I did is I cut a little copper disc 
and sanded all the paint off of that hole. So basically you just put your copper disc on there, a little bit of solder, and then heat the whole thing up and the solder is going to melt together. And there you go, Bob's your uncle. It's, it's really not very complicated. That was the easiest thing I did and it gave me great hope until I figured out that I couldn't actually use this thing as the boiler. One of my Patreons, Adam Zamora, really cool guy. He's given me tons of great advice over the last couple of years. He said, well, since you can't use this for your boiler, why don't you use it for your uh, cooling tower for your worm? And, uh, you know, thanks, Adam, because it was a perfect idea. And, you know, while I'm thanking Adam, let me go ahead and thank all of my Patreons, all you guys down here. Thank you so much for giving me ideas like this, helping me work through problems like this because I definitely would not be able to do half the stuff I do without all of your input. So I really appreciate it. And I appreciate your continued support despite the fact that I haven't put out a video in two months. You guys are very generous and amazing and I could not keep my lights on without you. So thank you very much. All right, so back to the worm. And one of the... One of the biggest uh, questions that I've seen asked is how do you coil this kind of copper tubing without kinking it? Um, it's really not very difficult. And you just take something roughly the size that you want to make your coil, something hard like a coffee can or a liquor bottle or a soup can, and you lay your tubing out and then you just keep pressure on that tubing and roll that coffee can or soup can or whatever on top of that pipe until you start making a coil. And you can use that to keep your size consistent to go through and kind of squeeze down on that tubing to make it the right size and uh, also to stretch out your coils or compress them, whatever you need to do to make adjustments. So you really don't need a whole lot of like special tools to do this and that suits me just fine because I don't have any. I know that a lot of you guys are probably in the same situation so but the one thing i will recommend that you get is these pipe bending springs it's basically just a an empty tube made out of spring and it comes in a whole bunch of different sizes and this one happens to be quarter inch you just slip this over your pipe and what it does is it prevents that pipe from crimping so you know normally if you're going to bend a 90 degree angle in your pipe you're going to have a real good chance of crimping that and putting a hard angle in it and squeezing it and pinching it off so that nothing can flow through it and that sucks because then you got to start over you can't use that piece anymore you can't really uncrimp a crimp not well anyway so get you one of these and then go slow just take your time there's no need to rush and one thing to keep in mind about copper is that copper work hardens. So if you work it and you bend it and you mess with it and you hammer on it, it gets harder and harder and more and more brittle. So the way to get around that is to anneal it. Basically you just heat it up with the torch until it's red and then let it cool back down to room temperature. That will soften it back up to make it a lot more easy to work. But really if you're if you're paying attention and you're taking your time, you're not going to have to mess with that. Um, I only had a couple of angles to do. This one up here and then this one down here. The trickiest part is really uh, once you've made your coil, getting it down in here and through this hole. I just made this hole a little bit wider than I needed to. It's a quarter inch tubing, so I made it, you know, I just kind of wallowed it out with some, with the, uh, with the bit to make it uh, just slightly oversized. But um, if you if you use roughly a coffee can or a liquor bottle sized object to wrap your coil around, you're gonna have plenty of room to get this thing down in there and, uh, and get it all situated. And then solder in one end or the other, and that's gonna make it stable enough so that you can then make the adjustments that you need on your coil. The other important thing to know on your coil is as that coil is going down, you can't have any flat spots or any upslopes. That's something most people don't really think about, but it's got to all slope down the whole way down. If it doesn't, 
liquid's gonna pool in there, then it's really hard for your distillate to actually drip out. So you wanna hold it up and look at it to make sure it's uh, got a good down angle all the way around, all the way through your coils. And then when you get it all shoved into here and soldered into place in at least one position, check it again and make sure that it still has that good down angle all the way through it. And you can actually test that by putting a few drops of water in the top and then just wait for that water to work its way all the way down. And if it doesn't, and you can, you know, blow through the top and it, put, and it gurgles, then you know you've got a, a flat spot in there somewhere and it's holding the water back. So do those things to make your life a lot easier and make this thing function properly. As far as like soldering it on the top, this is the ugliest thing I've ever done. <laughs> you wanna sand your stainless steel pieces and sand your copper pieces. And this is just a copper piece of heavy duty copper sheeting that I got from a hobby store. Same with this one down here. Really easy to cut with a pair of tin snips and it comes in, you know, little like six by nine pieces. But basically I used that to make a, a little flange that uh, I slid this onto the, onto the copper pipe before I installed it and just kind of kept it up here while I was getting everything installed. Once you have the position correct so that the top of this is gonna meet up with this guy right here, then you can go ahead and solder everything together. And uh, it's not pretty. Rather than trying to feed solder into the sides as you get this hot with your torch, put your liquid flux in there and then take a couple of short pieces of solder and put them in between these pieces of metal. And then take something like a pair of pliers that you can put on top, heat that up. And then as everything gets hot and melts, you'll be able to kind of sandwich those things together and, you know, get it to stick. So onto your, uh, and as you can see, I had to do a patch job here, just like I have here. This one did not want to stick very well. Basically what I did is I drilled out the hole a little too big for this, uh, for this hose barb. And so I had to cover the hole and put a piece of copper over there, drill it again, be more careful, and then screw it in. The good thing is these don't have to be soldered in, which is nigh on impossible, uh, but they will screw into a half inch hole. So I used a stepped bit and drilled half inch holes for each of these. And then I just did some thread tape, some of these little grommets and they work great. You can tighten them up as you need to if they start dripping at all, but if they do, it's gonna be really slow. But I mean, they're in there, you know, they're not going anywhere. So after I just spewed all that information at you about how to make this thing, um, I'm positive I left some stuff out. So if you have questions, go ahead and post them in the comments section down below. And if you have any ideas of stuff you'd like to see me test in the testing still, hypothetically, of course, go ahead and post those down in the comments section as well. I'm, I've got a few ideas, but I'd really like to hear what you guys have to say. So, uh, Sorry it's been so long since I put up a video, but if you enjoyed this one, do me a favor and hit the like button because it really, really helps out the channel. If you enjoy this kind of content and you want to see more of it, hit the uh, subscribe button and then also hit the little bell icon right next to it and that will make sure you get notified every time I post new content. All right, thanks for watching. Talk at you later. All right, there. is where you get all your fun noise from. <laughs>